High Elf, Wood Elf, Dark Elf, Sea Elf, Eladrin. On and on the elven sub races go, like a parade that always adds on another float, like a train that always has yet another boxcar. No other D&D race does this. No other race involves this obsession with creating one sub race after another. Human is by far the most diverse of all the races, but rarely is the human categorized into sub races in an RPG. The Elder Scrolls series, I believe, pulls this off. It has its Bretons, Red Guards, Imperials, and Nords. But in most RPGs, and especially in Dungeons and Dragons, humans just have ethnicities and cultures. They only factor in on the storytelling and the role-playing side of things. Here's the Elf formula. Elf plus Thang equals Elf subrace of Thang. It goes like this. You take the baseline Elf, the long-lived graceful, beautiful, nature-dwelling, the race with the pointy ears, you know, you add some other ingredient to it. Usually, said ingredient is something drawn from the natural world or something from an archetype, such as elf plus woodlands equals wood elf, or elf plus wizard equals high elf. Let's take a quick look at the elf subraces in D&D, and we'll see what we can find. High Elf, which is Elf plus Wizard, the most standard and baseline Elf in D&D. Agile, nature-loving, and quite inclined to magic. Wood Elf is Elf plus Woodlands, another common type of Elf. It's more rustic, more inclined towards being a druid or a ranger. Drow is Elf plus Underdark, the alluring yet vicious Dark Elf, with some of the best developed lore of any creature in D&D. Half-Elf, which is Elf plus Human, the classic half-Elf, half-Human subrace with great versatility and natural social skills. Technically, it's considered its own race by the mechanics of the player options, but lore and identity-wise, it's a subrace. Sea-Elf, which is Elf plus Sea. They are reclusive elves that dwell in the ocean, swimming, and breathing water. Eladrin, Elf plus Feywild natives to the Feywild who have innate magic associated with the four seasons of the year. Pallid Elf, which is Elf plus Moon, mystical and intuitive elves who follow a moon goddess. Mark of Shadow Elf, Elf plus Shadow, cunning elves who excel at performance and stealth, and they bear magical marks. Deathless, Elf plus Undead, the elves of the Undying Court comprise a sort of collective deity, and they stave off death not through necromancy, not through negative energy, but actually through positive energy. Shadar Kai, Elf plus Shadowfell, cold-hearted, Shadowfell-dwelling elves that serve the Raven Queen, essentially the dark counterpart to the Eladrin. Moon Elf, Elf plus Moon also called Silver Elves. They are adventurous and they intermingle with many other races. Sun Elf, Elf plus Sun, also called Gold Elves. This subrace is glorious, ambitious, and arrogant. Star Elf, which is Elf plus Star. Tall elves who dwell in a demiplane near the Feywild and they battle magic-wielding monsters from the ethereal plane. Wild Elf, Elf plus Wilderness, are they the original, primal elf subrace, or are they savages who have no true elven culture at all? Grey Elf, Elf plus Loftiness, tall, majestic, aloof, and arrogant, the Grey Elves dwell in isolated mountain citadels and rarely allow outsiders to enter. Aquatic Elf, Elf plus water, essentially the same as the sea elves, though with some slight differences in the lore, and traditionally they cannot breathe water, but rather hold their breath for extended periods of time. Avariel, elf plus air, flying elves with feathery wings, considered one of the eldest elf subraces. Most were wiped out in conflicts with dragons. Lythari, elf plus wolf, these are not werewolves, but rather these are elves that can shapeshift into wolves. They prefer to live away from civilization. Fairy, elf plus fiend. Not fairy, but fairy. This subrace is the result of elves breeding with demons or other kinds of fiends, sort of the elf equivalent of a tiefling. Celadrin, or Celadrin. Elf plus celestial. Another mixed race elf, this time it has elven and celestial parentage. Dragloth, 
Elf plus Demon. Continuing with the Half-Blood offspring theme, the Dragloth is a monstrous thing born of a drow priestess mother and a Glabrezu demon father. Athasian Elf, or maybe Athasian Elf, Elf plus Nomad. The nomadic and tribalistic elves of Athos, renowned for their ability to run swiftly and for extended periods. Snow Elf, Elf plus Snow. Reclusive, pale-skinned elves that dwell in the Crystal Mist Mountains. Valley Elf, Elf plus Valley. The tallest of the elves, dwelling within the Valley of the Mage, and often disdained by other elf subraces who view them as sellouts. These elf subraces really just keep on coming, like the Dragonlance setting has the Sylvanesti, forest-dwelling, magic-wielding elves, the Qualanesti elves that interact heavily with other races and transform trees into modified forms of buildings, the Kaganesti elves that are barbaric and wild and are treated by the other elf races as low caste or even slaves, the Darganesti that live in the depths of the ocean, and the Dimernesti that live in the shallow waters and coasts. We haven't even touched on all the Magic the Gathering planes and their various kinds of elves, and I guess Magic the Gathering and D&D coexist now. And if you really want to go down the rabbit hole, check out the homebrew elf subraces out there. On D&D Wiki, there are at least 24 elf races, such as Cosmic Elf, Crystal Elf, Horse Elf, and the half-elf, half-dwarf thing called the Dwelf. And on D&D Beyond, there are 68 pages of homebrew elves. I don't even know where to begin there. Why are there so many elf subraces? This question both interests and perplexes me. I took to asking the internet and various gamer friends of mine to see what theories people had. I made this post on Reddit. Why are there so many elf subraces? From core D&D to the various D&D settings to a slew of homebrew, there are so many elf subraces. Why is that? The most upvoted comment on the post said, even in Tolkien's works, there's essentially different elf races. The Sindar, the Nandor, the Teleri elves, they all have different appearances and lifestyles. So even in regards to modern fantasy writing, having different elves is old hat. It's an accurate statement, though it doesn't fully exhaust the question. Let's keep going. Another person made a point saying, because people are really, really into elves. So maybe a better question that I should be asking is, why do people like elves so much? In any case, still trying to find an answer as to the why at the heart of the issue. Another person said they are overly adaptable by nature. Elves are quite adaptable and versatile, and I do think that is part of the answer. For some reason, when I think of all the elf subraces, I think of attractive cosplayers. They love the novelty and the aesthetics of playing with one kind of look after another. In the end, the cosplayer is still that same attractive person, but each new look is cool to try out. It's a way to keep things fresh and interesting, because otherwise people get bored of the same thing over and over again, especially when we have a person who is very attractive, or a fantasy race that is close to being perfect. Over time, we get desensitized to these sorts of things. It's too nice. It gets boring. Elves are beautiful. Slender, wise, cunning, magical, skillful, they're master artisans. They live for centuries, yet remain youthful and attractive throughout that. They don't have to sleep, just they do four hours of meditation per day. They're perceptive, they're quick, they're versatile, they're immune to sleep magic, they're resistant to being charmed. They enjoy large amounts of personal and social freedoms. They are close to nature, and yet do not wreck the environment. And... They are not burdened by the historical baggage that we humans have. With that level of near perfection, they seem almost like angels. As much as these qualities are their strong points, they are also their weak points. Without flaws, without conflicts, without that chaos, there is no story. There is nothing to incite the action. Think of the orcs as a contrast. There doesn't need to be 1,000 different orc subraces because orcs are full of flaws, conflicts, and chaos. A few orc subraces is cool, you know, some variety is always nice, but the orc is pretty much a self sustaining story driver. So I'm already seeing the answer to my question starting to formulate. There are so many elf subraces because 
Otherwise, elves are too perfect and they become boring. Some authors are insightful enough to give them flaws, such as Tolkien giving them this burden of grief that kind of ate at them from within. It threatened to diminish them. Or are a Salvatore's drow that are rife with corruption and twisted social and religious practices. But when we do not introduce such deep flaws to the elves, we end up endlessly chasing the dragon, inventing more and more elf subraces to keep things interesting and fresh. Another comment on Reddit reflects this idea, saying, because after the first 200 years, you'd be looking for Weird Strange too. Let's see if there are any more gems on my Reddit post. Because variety is nice. Why are there so many people that think they have the authority to tell strangers how they should play a fantasy game? Ah, Reddit. The battleground where so many go to fight the villains they have created in their own imaginations. I also made the same post on a couple of the big D&D Facebook groups, along with my Discord server. In reading through all the various answers, I can group the replies into basically five main categories. Elves are cool slash popular. Elves are highly versatile slash adaptable. Elves bang a lot and they breed with everyone. Elves have just always been this way historically. Living so long means elves experiment a lot. I also got a few comments that amounted to this is racist slash offensive slash you're a jerk. Just remember, my brave companions, the only way not to offend anyone at all is to have no argument, no position, no conviction. Do not think. Just shut your mind off and go sleepwalking blindly into the shifting winds. Based on the responses I was getting on my social media posts, I ran a poll on YouTube that asked, why are there so many elf subraces in D&D? Which answer do you think best explains this? The options for answers were, Popularity. People think elves are cool. This drives products. Versatility. Elves adapt to any environment and mix with anyone. Longevity. Elves live so long that they experiment a lot. Tradition. Elves have always had variety throughout history. Or the last one. This question is offensive. Don't ask these sorts of things. Popularity was by far the most voted answer. Versatility got second place. Longevity received third, tradition was fourth, and lastly, 3% of respondents thought this topic was offensive and that I should not be asking these sorts of questions. People in this poll largely pointed to the popularity of elves driving products. A common downside of RPGs is the trend for creators to produce more and more new stuff without deepening what we already have. This is a general problem Anyone who is involved with creating RPG content is going to have to grapple with this. It's basically a problem of lots of breadth and not much depth. This is a serious issue because with RPGs, the content that deepens things, lore, novels, and art, are not what sell so well. Gamers want crunch. We want new classes, new races, new feats, new spells, new items, new monsters, new mechanical options. A book of new player options or new monsters is going to sell much better than a book that essentially is an encyclopedia of lore for existing stuff. For an interesting read, check out the site TV Tropes and compare the two articles, Our Dwarves Are All The Same and Our Elves Are Different. In the first piece, the site makes the case that dwarves tend to always stay within their stereotypes. They all have Scottish accents, long beards, gruff personalities, a love of drinking, a love of treasure, etc. In the second article, the site outlines the common elf characteristics, such as immense beauty, long lifespans, connection to nature and magic, pointy ears, and a superiority in virtually everything. Their art, their crafts, their food, their virtues, their health and youthfulness, just overall better than everyone else. Along with this is the observation that virtually all fantasy books and games that have elves feature multiple elf subraces. The site makes the case that this does originate from the fact that there were different cultural takes on the elf creature in Northern Europe. This variety was solidified by Tolkien, who studied such history and folklore, and indeed, he created both high elves and wood elves in Middle-earth, and a couple other things in the mix too. Tolkien sired the modern fantasy genre as we know it, and countless authors and game designers follow in this tradition. 
Uh, someone commented on my Facebook post. I want to be a unique elf, like everyone else. Along with the social media posts, I did speak with a number of friends of mine, asking them why they thought there are so many elf subraces. One of my closest friends gave an interesting answer, and I should say that he's probably the smartest person I've ever known, and his ability to read people is incredible. His guess was that since elves are so popular, and have such a tradition of multiple subraces, that they are naturally the favorite self-insert for players. Our society hyper-focuses on people's identities, and especially nowadays, many people want a representation of themselves, sometimes a one-to-one -one representation. It's hard to do that with many fantasy races, but since elves are so close to humans, and they have the power fantasy appeal of being so all-around awesome, it's no surprise that the elf is the chosen one for this march of endless sub-races. He also made another comment which echoed something that I've been saying for years. In all reality, the elven race as a whole would dominate the world, since they are superior in so many ways, and they live for centuries while maintaining vigor and youthfulness, and they only have to meditate four hours a day. They would absolutely crush all the competition. He said that the drow, given all their corruption and schemes and atrocities committed, are probably the closest representation to how elves should actually play out in a fantasy world. So, by this point, I believe I have something of an answer as to why there are so many different kinds of elves. It began historically, with the folklore of different European cultures expressing elves in different ways. Tolkien, who pioneered the fantasy genre, drew from this and made different kinds of elves, establishing the tradition. The elves themselves, due to their versatile natures, their adaptability in different environments, and their intermingling with other races, lend to distinct types of elves developing over time. Since the elves are such near-perfect beings, essentially idealized humans, as though descendants of a people who were never exiled from the Garden of Eden, were drawn to them. They are very, very attractive in all meanings of the word. We wish we could be like them. In a hobby such as D&D that is part of geek culture, many players are not exactly the popular kids in school, which further fuels the appeal of being a majestic and superhuman type thing, something that captivates and strikes awe into whoever beholds you. Elves were thus the natural fit for the RPG race that people self-inserted into. This popularity drove the promotion of elves in all kinds of RPG products. Combined with everyone wanting to make their own special version of the elf is the fact that elves can get boring since they are so close to perfect. Instead of giving them flaws and problems, most people just make new remixes of them to keep things fresh and interesting. There you have it. Historical folklore, tradition established by Tolkien, elves are highly adaptable, people love them for their beauty and superiority, people self-insert into elves, creators make products to meet this demand, players make lots of homebrew, endless elf remixes to keep the near-flawless race from getting stale. By the way, of all the D&D races, the one that I personally relate to the most is the Half-Elf. Surprised? I've always felt like someone partially from another place, a realm of imagination and dreams and creativity, yet partially from the real world, a place that requires practical skills and the ability to get along with humans. Humans who are, in the end, the most versatile and diverse race of them all, who are the best and the worst all together, endlessly fascinating and ultimately part of a story that is much greater than anyone can comprehend. I want to say a special thank you to all my supporters on Patreon, in particular these dashing rascals, Adam Wood, Vince Villelli, Nick Thy Pirate King, Locke Monroe, and Nicholas A. And if you are interested in supporting the channel and videos like this, check out the link down in the video description to my Patreon. As well, there's a link to my monthly newsletter where you can get signed up for that for free. There are all kinds of content and rewards that come along with it. Until we meet again, my brave companions, remember that your elf is the most special and the most unique and the best elf of them all. 
And as always, may your adventures be many.